Welcome. This is the Learning Technology Group, a collaboration of Academic Technology Services and Center for Instructional Innovation. And uh, my name is Justina Brown. We've been doing this for about three years now. And all of our sessions are recorded and archived on a website that's on the agenda. So if you didn't get one, you can pass that around. And so on there, we'll put any resources that, web resources that are relevant to this session. And you can go back and find in every session we've ever done and look at those resources and if there was a recording, so they're there. Okay. So for today, we have Paul Piper of Western Libraries. And our subject is One Search and Ideas for Great. Great. Okay. Well, Take it away. I want to welcome everybody. And I have absolutely, as I told Justina, I was going to pretty much ad lib this, so I have absolutely nothing planned. Um, a lot of you already know I'm looking around a fair amount about OneSearch. Um, I'll do a brief intro to the product. It's basically um, the library is a part of a consortium of 37 other libraries in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and the decision was made to go with this product at a consortial level. So. We had some very minor input, 137th of which um, we voiced, and I think we were agreeable to go that direction also, so it was kind of a group decision. Um, the main reasons for going with the OneSearch is that it unifies a number of different services that we have in different areas. It brings them all into one interface. Um, it's much more of a Google-like search that students are familiar with, so they're used to going to a single search box and doing searching, and it uses a post-filtering mechanism, which I'll, I'll show you, um, to filter results afterwards. And it brings in a lot of other material, a lot of other content that um, belongs to a large database um, that is part of the OneSearch product, so we're, we purchased a lot of additional um, content. Western is in the first consortia group, of, or the first cohort group of going live with this product. We went live with it in June. Um, there's 12 more libraries coming on board uh, at the beginning of January. This product was, um, there, there were six original libraries in the cohort one. Uh, group. University of Washington experienced um, a lot of really bad problems and um, they've kind of pulled out and are waiting for some things to get fixed before they again go back into it, um, which is too bad. But we've been able to kind of tough, tough our way through and um, I think the product is so much improved now over what we initially got um, that uh, most of us who have been working on this pretty closely are amazed, what can I say, that it's improved that much. So I'm going, to show, I'm going to demonstrate some basic features of the product and then just kind of open it up for discussion and ideas and brainstorming and um, whatnot. Obviously, the product is designed to help faculty and students do their research and order materials um, that would be useful for them. The, the other component of this is that the, a lot of libraries now are um, more into the philosophy of access versus ownership. In other words, with so much content available, it's difficult to buy everything that our, our patrons need, that our users need. So we're committed to getting things for you. And that's kind of the philosophy of most libraries now. That's one of the reasons we joined the consortium. Um, people are kind of, libraries are kind of banding together and um, if it's the kind of philosophy, if we don't have it, we'll borrow it from someone who does and get it to you as quickly as we can. So that's kind of the philosophy here. So the first thing to notice when using OneSearch is that there's um, three scopes and the first scope is Truly everything, it's where you would search for articles, books, um, videos, any kind of other material that you'd want. If you knew that you only wanted something here at Western, let's say it was a book that you'd used in a class, um, or a book that you wanted your students
students to take a look at. And, and um, you know, it was on the shelves here and we knew that. You could search at Western Own Link. Um, and the, the third scope is actually the second one we added. Um, this is things that are in our library and available through the Summit system as well. And I'll kind of take a look at, at all three of these. Um, but if we, if we do a search um, in the everything yep. <laughs> category, the first thing that you encounter is a login um, box. And we have found through repeated tests that functionality is improved if you log in. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Um, the other thing that's improved is the access to, um, to borrowing things as well. So, But you don't have to log in. It's totally up to you. And you can just bypass it and, and go in as a guest if you want. So, I, um, I did a search for bugs, which is my, my key term these days. Um, and then you can see that there are a number of post filter um, or post search filters on the um, left hand side of the page. Um, date filters, language filters, availability filters, and um, this sort of thing. So let's assume I only wanted articles. I could just click the articles link. Um, we've reduced the number of facets to only three showing. And then to see more options, you would need to click the more options tag um, and see if anything else showed up. These will also um, appear based on frequency. So the, um, the number of Hits, the top number of hits will appear first here, and then second, second, third, third. So one of the first things then that you see are there's these um, dots that indicate whether we own it or not. Now, um, some of the databases or some of the content in OneSearch is still, it's owned by other companies, and some of the publishers are not playing ball 100% with Ex Libris, the company that produces OneSearch yet. So there is some content that is not fully in here yet. Um, this, is, this is a two-year project. So uh, basically, we, it started in, in June, and it's going to be finished, um, well, it started in January, I should say, with the back end of, of things. But it'll be finished. Um, in another year after this January, so two years from this past January. So a lot of the things that are problematic in it now, we're hoping will be totally fixed by then. So in any case, the, the green ball indicates that we have it, but it says to check it for availability. So if we click it open here, um, it should ideally then give us some options for where we can get it. And um, these are then links that if you clicked, should take you directly to um, the article. I haven't actually tried anything on LexisNexis, so this is good. Um, so you can see here then it's the actual article. So for undergraduates, um, we found, and Ex Libris has argued, I think, pretty significantly that uh, a single interface that allows them to get um, book materials and article materials and AV materials and this sort of thing is a superior system for them to use. It's the easiest system for them to use. They don't need to be learning a lot of different names of databases. They don't need to be learning a lot of different systems which might have different looking interfaces and this sort of thing to go into. This is one place they can go, they can find something, they can view it, or they can borrow it if they need to. Um, so that's the everything search. Um, if I wanted to see peer-reviewed journal articles, um, I could click the peer-reviewed 
limiter, um, et cetera, et cetera. Any, any questions at this point? I can take questions at any time. So. so after you do a search, can you narrow it to just WWU, or do you have to do that first? You can. Um, that's a good question. There is a filter for um, availability. I believe it is. Unless David hit it. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Not yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, it's usually up on the left. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be a top level facet. Um, try a different search and let's see. If, okay. Or I can back off. W -W yeah. So this is not the same search as the <coughs> w -W at WW only scope. And the, the reason for that is um, that this limit here, if I go ahead and click this, will give you things um, that are available here but there's two areas that it's not returning exact results. One is for, um, for electronic books, for uh, huge sets of our electronic books. They're not in here. And secondly, materials from some of the heritage resources and special collections are not in here either. So there are, there are errors in this limit. And we're working with, um, again, we're working with the company consistently to correct these things and to get these things worked out. But it's better if you do the pre-limit uh, at WWU only. This actually reflects everything that we have, whether it's checked out or not, whether it's an ebook or not, and um, uh, et cetera. The only caveat here is to get articles and books returning together you do have to use the everything link or um, filter scope. If you use these other scopes, you will not get articles. You'll get the journal titles, and in some cases, you can drill down into the articles through the journal titles, but if you're looking for a specific journal article, um, that won't work, okay? So you would need to, need to do it in here. Now, you can, you can do, um, title searches and anything like that directly from um, this everything or this this box here but we do have an advanced search too that I'll show you and then I'll show you a browse so um, so if I wanted to search for the sun also rises um, here in our collection, I would, I would do a title search. Um, previously, they worked better with quotes, but now they're working pretty well, I think really well, actually, without quotes. So you don't have to worry about quotation marks as much as you used to. Um, so the first three of these are the book, The Sun Also Rises. And then if you wanted to find it, uh, to check out, you would just click the find it link here. It's going to give you the floor number and the call number and this sort of thing. Um, and it tells you then what the status is. In this case, this one is checked out. Um, so you can check the other ones and see if they're in. Um, but basically, then you would just go to Wilson 5 West and look for this call number and, and find the book and bring it down for checkout. Um, you can look for journal articles in the everything search. So if, if as an instructor you assigned a specific journal article and you didn't want to put it on reserve for whatever reason, um, the students could simply search the title here and be able to pull up the journal article. Um, and then if I have a book that I'm not really sure, or let's say an author that I'm not really sure if we have everything they've written. Um, I could just put it into um, into this general search. Let's say David. And 
and it's going to then pull up items that we own. It's supposed to give precedence in terms of where they show up in the record uh, to things that we own. It's not doing that 100% yet. So it's kind of intermingling some of um, records in. We are going to be deduping the system, which will then create a single record for, let's say, the notebooks here. It will be a single record that will also contain the summit item. That's, that deduping has, it's a major project, and it's going to be moved to, I believe, March or so. Is that right, David? I think so. Yeah. So anyway, in this case, um, let's say there was something here that we didn't own that you wanted to get. This would be, um, previously, if you looked it up in our catalog, you would need to click the little, and you didn't see it in the list of results, you would need to click the little repeat in Summit um, icon and search it again in Summit. In this case, uh, you, you do something a little bit similar, but it's right into the system, it's built into the system, so you don't have to jump out of the catalog system and jump into another system. You simply hit the request from Summit borrowing link here, and then it takes you into, if, if you all have done some requests that are kind of familiar to Summit interface, and you just move through um, the different stages here. I'm not gonna go any further, but um, you would just go ahead and order the item here. And then as for all Summit items, um, two to five day business days is typical for receiving them, they come in at the um, circulation desk, you'll receive an email when it comes in, I believe faculty have document delivery, so it would just be delivered to your department, if you specify that. So any, any questions about this so far? Yeah? So if I assign my students, uh, the, the they need to go find a, a journal article, mm -hmm. peer reviewed from a certain subject area. Okay. And I usually have them go into Cyclit or right, right into you know, some other database. Can that be done from the home page? Right, well, the, yes, it can. And the, re the reason is, is because um, we're dealing primarily with content that's coming from um, big, Packages, big journal publishers, and packages of, of journals that they um, sell, like Springer and Wiley and, and companies like that. These are pretty much the same journals that are being indexed by something like um, Psychinfo. Is that what you said? Or yeah, something? I said yeah. an so, old word for it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, brought back <laughs> memories of silver platter and all that. Um, so this is. This is accurately searching the same content, essentially, <coughs> but in all subject areas. Now, there's some over, there's some um, content that will be unique to some of these databases. Okay, um, EBSCO databases right now still have some content in EBSCO that is not showing up in one search. Um, but overall, for an undergraduate project, a student can find plenty here. So, and the way to simply do that would be to go to um, the everything search again and search for, do you, do you have a topic you could recommend? Uh, Something near, fairly narrow. Let's see, uh, college students with disabilities. Okay, so I'm gonna put, in this case, I will put college students in um, quotation marks and I'm going to use an asterisk here to get student or student. And I'll go ahead and run this. And then once I run it, then I'm going to um, filter it by peer reviewed journals. And so then these articles here are going to be, are going to fit your criteria, right? Or fit the student's criteria. Well, they need, for their assignment, it would need to be from a psychological perspective. Um, so how would, would you be able to narrow it further? Um, you could 
narrow it further with a subject, if okay. psychology is an option here, or if there was an option under here that fit that. But in terms of um, in terms of Cummings from a strictly psychological perspective, um, I mean, I'm seeing some of these qualify, mm -hmm. right? And so I would think that they could just filter through you know, the first two or three pages of these and find some adequate, don't you think? Or um, if, it, if it looked, you know, I would expect as a, as a prop, you would want to take a look at what came up first and, and make sure it was serving the need. But if it didn't look like it was serving the need at all, then you could always go back to, you know, cite that. Um, because we kept all our old databases, so we still have the databases. Um, so it's not like we got rid of those. So if you're if you're used to working in the databases and want to continue doing it, by all means do it. But um, it should be able to give you and the students pretty good results with just this type of search. Um, any any other questions? Yes. Other than the um, faculty delivery privilege that you mentioned, are there any differences? that we should know for access as far as students versus faculty, accessing items or getting um, hold of anything? Can you think of any I can't really think of anything. Okay. Can. Um, there, there is, you know, you can set up a My Account. I was going to go into that a little bit later, but I don't think there's any difference in here between It would just be the length you could check something out, or if you want something delivered. I mean, I think mm -hmm. yeah. Or the, booking the a video for a class. Yeah, I mean, like there's yeah, booking there something, a booking. that type of thing. Yeah. yeah, there's other services. So, is there a faculty services page that yeah. you could link? Okay, I'll put that on the site. Um, there's a faculty services page <coughs> for the library. Is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I was only asking just to make sure that I don't ask my students to do something right. or get something that they can't do that I can, and just no, it's, out of it ignorance. Be pretty, um, pretty uniform in terms okay. of what they're seeing, what you're seeing, what you're getting back. We've heard a little bit with this researcher um, component of it, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. It's it's not working very well right now. I mean, theoretically, they said you could, you know, you could put down that you had. Um, you know, you were in a certain discipline and you had a certain level of degree and this sort of thing, and it would make a difference in what came back in the searches, but we played around with it fairly intensely and found that it really didn't make any difference at all, so I don't think they quite had that working yet. Okay. Um, so do, you, do you want to show them the permalink? That's what I was just going to yeah. suggest. Yeah. Um, so, and, and people who teach, you might want to... Um, give examples of, of how this would be useful, but um, in if, if there are things that you want your students to have and you want to put them on Canvas or, you know, put them on Reserve somehow, um, in the details section, there is a permalink now. Um, it only appears if there's an ALMA record ID and it only appears on the display.do page. So like you'd have to click on a title first. Okay. And go like to that that mm -hmm. specific records page. Oh, okay. I didn't know what's that. Yeah, it's so not it's not going to show up in this view. So this guy does not have. Try these are, try a book. Yeah, these are articles. I wonder if articles. Are you into title in the records page? So like search for a book. Um, And then so give me a book title. Pig Earth, Old Yeller. Pig Earth. Okay, so... So click on the title Oops. Pig Earth. 
on the link on the title. above the author's name. Yeah. Oops. Oh, sorry. Go back too far. Oh, well, I that one probably would work too. Anything that's available at Western should have an online ID. So if you okay. scroll down. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. Okay. But you have to click on the title first. Is okay. That yeah. Yeah. It's not appearing on the details. Is that something that will change? Um, I mean, it, it theoretically could change. I was told that most students wouldn't be interested in the permalink, so that it wouldn't be very useful in this particular view. But it would be more useful to faculty and staff yeah. who are, you know, creating a, a page of okay. Here's the, here are the books that we I have my students send me a, a permalink so I can review the article prior to them doing the work. Um, okay. So that's always an issue because they send me bad links all the time. <laughs> yeah. Because um, they take them from the, from the when, URL. The URL set it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if that, if that was something that would be helpful, we can certainly work on that. Um, but at this very moment, you know, you have to click on the, 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 the title of the book, and then it'll, the <coughs> panel link will be visible on Got that it. page. But then, it's only for book titles? Right, journal not, titles. Journal titles, too? I, I found journal. I, I did it earlier today with some journal titles. Okay. It, it's an automated program that I wrote, so I don't exactly know what it's going to find. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, what, I, what the program does is looks for the Alma record ID, and any time it has one of those, it's going to inject that link into there. Okay. So probably articles don't have an Alma record right. in an MS ID then. And Maybe a print holding probably would. Possibly the journals I was looking at were printed. Yeah, I, I would assume that. You know, link to the journal record. Yeah. yeah. And right. as as faculty, I would think that if you want your students to read an article, it would be easier for them and for you if you link directly to the article in the database, right. because that's going to get them directly to the full text instead mm -hmm. of making them click and click and click and click. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I guess I should mention <coughs> a little trick. If you, if Paul, if you can go and, and find something, a book. Or a print journal where I can show you the permalink again. Sure. I looked up portal this morning and it yeah, had one. Portal, so. But you need to do but the full do the full title. Portal libraries in the academy, or library in the academy, something like that. I think it's what I was going to say is that um, the. The permalink is really just, it, it takes whatever occurs after one search. It's that first one. Um, so you would need to go in, click the title, and then yeah. so, the details, and so here's the permalink. So yeah. it's kind of hard to see because that's a little bit small, but if you were to look at that URL, it, it basically says, HTTP. Yeah, I can read it. Library at www. Yeah, one search. Slash one search slash the ID number. Mm -hmm. The redirect will actually handle anything after one search. So oh, you, so you don't put, need that number. You, you don't need the number. You could, if you wanted the OCLC number instead, you could. It would be library.ww.edu slash one search slash four four five blah blah blah. Okay. Or you could put the title. And use pluses where there are spaces. Mm -hmm. So, like pigs plus earth, mm -hmm. right? And it would get you. So, basically, it's just okay. going to take you to the search page using that ID or phrase or whatever as the search. So if you were setting up something in Canvas, could you put those into the links? For Canvas and then oh, yeah. display on your page. Yeah, so I mean, it, you could, like I said, it, it could be an ID number, anything that if you can find what you're looking for, you just, you know, append that to the end of that permalink and mm -hmm. it'll take you back there. Nice. Um, so then I, I just wanted to jump into a few other things here real quickly. Um, one of the things that people ask for sometimes is call numbers. Um, they want they want to be able to look at call number ranges online before they come over to the library. Maybe see what's in that area. That maybe they have a book, 
put a columnar on it and they want to see what else is around there. So for that um, and for several other things, the browse search is actually a very good way to go. And it has um, subject author title and then Library of Congress um, call numbers on it. So um, if I do something like this, I'm just making this up. But, um, and browse, whoops. Should give me a list of materials that are right around that area then. So this would be kind of an electronic look at what's on the shelf in the library. Um, and as I noted, it also has um, you know authors as well. to demo is the advanced search. Um, really nice features over what this open box gives you. And I've tended to steer a lot of faculty toward advanced search over just the open box um, because often their searches are more refined and they need to be um, you know, they, they're used to more demanding search engines and more strategies. So one of the things that you can do here is you can create um, different sets of, of things and then filter them also with some of the filters we have and the scopes we have um, on, on here. And again, you know, I might want um, an author and let's say um, I'll do John Berger again here. But you can, if you're not 100% sure of the author um, name, you can just put contains. Um, is exact is, you know, you're only going to get things by that person as this database is mapping that person. Is so. It? Is it la the, the exact, is it last name first or first name? That's a good question. So um, it, it typically, I believe, is the last name first. Let's just see. Oops. And then I know he wrote a book called Pig Earth, but I'm just going to pretend I don't know. Entire title, so I'm just going to put Earth in here, and then I want to see if we own it. So I'm just going to scope it to um, Western, and I'm just going to leave these other things alone. But you can see that you have other filtering mechanisms here as well. Um, and so then, in this case, I'm getting. Um, This is so. What I'm seeing here is that this is exact is not working um, for this particular combination. So then you could do two things. You could just change the um, word of the name and see if that does it, uh, which it did. Or what I would probably tend to do is just do this contains, and that's usually what I do because then it doesn't matter how the record is listing it. probably have much better success with it. So. Um, so what were the choices under material type in advanced search? In the advanced search. Mm -hmm. So material type, you can choose books, articles, journals, <coughs> images, audiovisual, and all items. Um, audiovisual we're, we're working right now with the company to refine the facet terminology and create 
more exact terms for, so for example, audiovisual would be parsed into CD and DVD, um, VHS, that sort of thing, uh, LP. Um, but that's going to be, again, kind of a continuing process that will go through probably the entire range of time that we're, um, we're adding libraries to the system. So probably another, I'd say, 18 months or so. Um, so we realize that's kind of a deficiency within the system right now. So what about languages? Languages um, in the advanced search are English, French, and German. I believe in the main search, let's check this, that um, they're pulling the languages from the articles or from whatever comes up. So let's just take a look. So there's many more. I'm again I the way I'm understanding these limits, these facets to work is that they they're analyzing the data and the information in these detail records or in the ALMA records, which are the records that are broadcast to Primo, and they're finding the range of languages in there for this particular search, and then they're allowing you to filter. Um, so in other words, they're not listing any language here that wouldn't pull something up. That's my understanding. And that's why the at WW top level facet didn't appear earlier because there were no records right. meeting that criteria. So I'm choosing Tibetan. And there we go. So, um, and they have B-Zugs instead of bugs. So any other questions? Um, let me just mention one other thing real quickly, too. This e-shelf can be kind of handy. I haven't used it much. Elizabeth, you've used it, so right? No. No? Okay. I always forget about it. Okay. Um, but this, this enables you to, when you're doing research, create sets of um, titles that might be useful to you, and you create folders in here, and then put you know, different titles in different folders. And the way that you do this is simply by choosing this little um, star icon next to the, the record, and um, then they'll, they'll be added um, to your um, e-shelf. Can you use the, and I, I don't know the answer to this, so I'm not prompting you. Um, uh, can you use the e-shelf to save a search? No, you okay. can save search. I actually I'm not 100% sure. Okay. So the next tab over is queries, the middle tab. Okay. And I think the default behavior is that it only saves your queries, your searches for that session. Okay. So if you close your browser and come back, it's not it's okay. kind of empty. But I think you can save. Yeah, I haven't played with this at all. Okay. So I don't, I don't so if you clicked on this session's queries, which is just above that, yeah, this one, yeah, I think you can yeah. see. So those are the ones that he's done since he opened this session. Um, but but then after, as soon as I log out, as soon as you close the browser, yeah, those will all put, you know disappear. So if you did want to save them, um, I'm not sure how to do that, but it's somewhere in that area. I just don't remember how. <laughs> Click you on should the... be able to save them. It looks like you can. Oh, maybe it's in, if you go back to the search results page, just click one search. Back to here? Yeah. And then scroll down to the very bottom left. Save query. Ah, there we go. That's how you do it. Okay, I didn't know that. So then you could, you could save that query and collect them in your. Um, it wouldn't. They would probably be in your eShelf, but also in the My Account area. And it looks like oh, you could also do. Here. You can select the entire page. So if there's, you want everything that's on that, you can click on. I think that's what it says. Where's that? Add page to eShelf. To eShelf, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you do that because usually. You get some yeah. 
I just know that's that's one of the hand and not many people use the the login option in EBSCO but I know that's one of the the handy things is that you can save searches and it can email you results and email you when things are added and I don't know if this will do all that but it's it's nice just to be able to save a search so you can go back and run it you yeah. just have to register once like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there's a great account in EBSCO and then you can have it email you okay. new, new matches to your search okay just be aware that there's a known issue that if it if it's a world cat item the link will not work but everything else works <laughs> and we've reported that bug but uh, we're still waiting so do you know how to actually set that up uh, I have not used that in a while but I believe through my oh, account maybe. okay so email but that wouldn't be <coughs> that wouldn't be automated off the top of my head, but I know I've set that up before. I know Rob and Gabe and other people have done that too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I haven't used that, so it's somewhere in my account. Uh, I just don't remember it. Yeah. Um, and, and that type of thing, I think, would be more useful to you as faculty as opposed to students because. You're going to be working on research projects that are much longer, you know, than maybe graduate students. students. Graduate students, graduate students yeah. yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But for undergrads, you know, they're here for 11 weeks and they've got 11 weeks to do their one assignment, and they're not going to care about it. There's a few research, you know, social yeah. science research classes that are that require yeah. you know, a lit review. It's it's one of those. I know with the EBSCO thing, it's one of the things that usually seems to appeal more to faculty and grad students than than anybody else. So. One of the things you can do too in here is change your number of displays so you can get more uh, results displayed on your front page, which is nice. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really see how to do a set up that automated. It's probably under queries, I'm guessing. Yeah, I didn't see it under queries. And yeah, you probably have to like save a query save a search. and then. And then it will give you an option. Then maybe one of the options is, you know, send me email updates or something like that. One other thing, and I realize we'll be in film, but this is kind of off the record, is um, they don't officially support Safari. Ex Libris doesn't. But through some research, I've found that you can make it work if you enable third party cookies. That's the reason why it probably doesn't work, is because Safari blocks third-party cookies, and it's the only major browser to do so. So don't put that in the newspaper or anything, but if you did want to use Safari, that's probably the solution. It's worked for me. Is that something they're going to change? Ex Libris doesn't look like they're going to change it. No, I mean, we, we, we had all these weird issues, and. Um, with Safari users, or I mean, you can block third-party cookies in any browser, and I had done that when I first started working here. I noticed that I had unusual behavior, and it, it all just came together in one moment. I was like, "Oh, that's why Safari doesn't work. That's why it's not working for me." Blah blah blah. So we've reported the Safari problem, and they didn't say why it, they don't support it. They just said we don't support Safari. But that's. That's the only thing that makes it different than other browsers is that it, it blocks third-party cookies by default. So, we had a question one day, and I think Jolene might be able to help me with this. But the person was using a Chromebook computer, and we're having some issues. I mean, have you ever heard of why there might be any issues with that? No, but as I just said, you could, you know, in Chrome and any browser, you can block third-party cookies. And if you do that, I can guarantee you, you will have problems. I would wonder Problems with maybe, one search? Yeah. Okay. I would wonder if they were using, because Chrome is really easy to search incognito. It's a, you know, and you can set your browser to default to search incognito. And I don't think that allows cookies at all. Am yeah, I, I think you're right. Or if I it use does, incognito, it's only session only cookies and they'll, they'll disappear after you right, close. Right. And I use it, I use incognito on my phone, but I don't on my, on any other. Chrome browser, but I know it's fairly easy to, yeah, that's to a good do. Point. 
And I used to have it set up on my iPad that way, and I tried to use something that we have, one of our internal services, and it wouldn't work because it was incognito. And once I switched, it worked, and it was the cookie issue, so. Any other questions, or? Yeah. When I was a graduate student in English, um, one of our grad classes, you did a workshop for us showing, you know, how to research for this assignment we were doing. Is that something you do for other classes regularly? Or are you available for that? Yeah, I mean, um, that was probably Cubby's class. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, the librarians um, are liaisons to different departments. Mm -hmm. And we all work with, like, I work with journalism and English now, and mm -hmm. primarily open special collections. But um, I won't. I don't memorize everybody's departments, but um, you know, I'm, I'm English. English. Yeah. Like Mar Margaret and, and Lisa, Elizabeth, and Mary and all have subjects that they work with, and so um, yes, they're all willing to, and I'm willing to do sessions with classes. Um, yeah, and, and if you don't know, or if you talk to somebody who doesn't, you know, somebody you're talking to somebody else, and they yeah. want somebody to come, and they don't know, they can contact me. Okay. Directly, and yeah, my name's Elizabeth. on here, and I can put them in contact with who they need to. Okay, yeah. great. Elizabeth's our coordinator of instruction, so she can do that. But um, no, we're more than happy to. We can come in and do a demo kind of thing like this, or we can do, I prefer more interactivity, mm -hmm. you know, having the kids be able to do some research while I'm there, and then kind of, um, right. you kind of know yeah. why we're Class, that's my preference. Yeah, it was it was really helpful. I just I, it might be a situation where I need to start the class and see where the students are with it, sure. um, and whether they need sort of a workshop, interactive sure. workshop to. Yeah, and it's usually a little easier if they, do, if they get a little farther into the quarter. It's usually right. best if they're at a point where they're going to apply it. Right. 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 So with my few weeks in, yeah. with my freshmen, I have an assignment that they have to do, and right when I assign it, I say, okay, now we're going over to the library. We went into a lab so they could all work and we gave them the last 15 minutes to find yeah. an article so yeah. if they were smart <laughs> they found it right then right. of course now I'm getting a bunch of emails today because it's due tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it was very nice to have the librarian there to, yeah. to show them exactly what they needed to know for the assignment mm -hmm. and a few other things <laughs> okay and we can do tours you know of the of the um, library and the different areas of the library we can do little mini sessions if we do like I did a fixed class yesterday where I just came in for 25 minutes and, you know, Great. Um, yeah, I'd be interested in hearing from the faculty that are here what the word on the street is about OneSearch because we're still trying to figure out what's the best way to demonstrate it to faculty and to students. Yeah, I, I don't have, um, I don't know that a word on the street exists yet. At least I haven't really heard anything. <laughs> I've heard two people say, oh, yeah, one search. I don't understand it. And that's part of the reason I'm here, so that I can go back and hopefully, you know, ask, what exactly don't you understand? And maybe I can, maybe I can show them something now. Um, but uh, I just don't think a lot of faculty have a lot of familiarity with it yet. Um, the reason I'm interested, I'm teaching a 200-level class in the winter on uh, research and writing in the humanities that's focused on television series. And so one day per week we'll be in the classroom and one day per week we'll be in the computer lab researching and writing. So I just want to make sure I could guide students research on their chosen. They're going to choose a specific television series um, to serve as the basis for their research for a final paper for a presentation. So I know they're going to have to use this a lot in researching that series. So I guess one of the other things I'm worried about is differentiating between the more scholarly sources and uh, less scholarly sources, I guess, for them. And that's something I think I can experiment with and just kind of kind of teach them in that way. But I don't know if you have any tips for that particular issue. Um, well, you know, OneSearch does provide that peer-reviewed filter. And that's what right. most of our databases do now. And so you can usually get pretty good scholarly academic results by clicking that mm -hmm. and, and filtering that way. Um, and, but with books, you know, it's a little trickier. Um, generally, um, the books we collect are more scholarly than the public library collects, but I'm, I'm still baffled as to how the library sometimes, you know. And there's a lot of 
there's a lot of things that are hybrids, like Scientific American is a hybrid journal. They have ads. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of science journals are starting to think about putting ads in because they don't make enough money already. So. Um, but you know, I think I think with the filtering mechanism for articles, that's really the big challenge for students because they don't really understand, you know, what the concept of peer review is, maybe, or what the concept of scholarly or academic is compared to anything else out there. So, and this makes it really easy to, to be able to do that for your students, so. I also have a short video on what is a scholarly research mm -hmm. article, and so I, I'll add that to our resources, too. Oh, great. Yeah, and that's good. Made by UW. Made by UW. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything to add? Because certainly, yeah. Just learning this along with everyone else. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I didn't realize that. I should have said. I'm going to have to go back and ask those people why they didn't, why they didn't like one. Uh, I, don't, I think it's just, you know, new things. New well, things and the, good. Initial, yeah. the initial it's step is so different because you're, if you're old school. Right, and that was a person who's been teaching yeah. here since yeah. 94 or something. Right, you but kind of, you think you're needed, just uh, To get Western. started with some um, pointers about the different uh, right. limits or facets. Right. I hate calling them facets, but limits. Yeah. But it's, it's also changed just from when we implemented it. I mean, because I, I had a question from... Exactly. I also work in business school. I had a question from somebody. Uh, don't worry about it. I had, I contacted him and said I heard you had some concerns. He came back and said I can't get it now. It's working. I can't get it to replicate with you know the frustration I was having. Uh, and it was because oh, he had tried it over the summer. Yeah. And then there'd been upgrades. They've worked a lot of things out yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. And then That's how Canvas better. is. They keep. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. We say no, no, no. That doesn't work. And then it works. Then it does. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Can also improve it. All right. But yeah, the the search initial search when you find ten thousand response you know results, yeah. and you're expecting it to just be Western libraries. Right. That's just a mindset change, and and it's just putting that one yeah. Western only filter. Yeah. Yeah. 